let me be clear while there are plenty of extenuating circumstances if you are stuck and you decide to sit down you're not the cause of it often that's pretty much a hundred percent I know that stings to hear I didn't say you're the reason why you got knocked down I didn't say you're the reason why betrayal occurred I didn't say you're the reason why something that was unforeseen and unfair occurred to you so please get make sure you understand me but I am saying if you decide not to move that too was a decision just as powerful as a decision to run in the face of adversity, to run in the face of fear, to run, to walk, to crawl, to raise your hand and ask for help. That's a choice too. See, I I'm blown away when people, when you choose to move and play big, we know that's a choice. We give that credit. I chose to get out of my own way. But when you're stuck or when you're frustrated or when, you're, when you just sit down or when you procrastinate, all of a sudden the whole world is the reason why you're there. Listen, you know me. And if you don't know me, you're going to get to know me if this is your first time here. What I won't ever do is sugarcoat your power. Because we are powerful when we're moving. We're powerful when we're courageous. We're powerful when we're loving. And we're powerful when we're stuck. We're powerful when we're complaining. We're powerful when we're procrastinating. We're powerful when we're playing the blame game. You don't get to give up your power when it's conveniently uncomfortable for you. You are powerful. You would not be here on this channel if you were not powerful. You know your power and you're either living in your power or you know your power and you're trying to get back to it. Either way, you're powerful. And so when you make a decision, make that decision in full ownership. Like I'm choosing right now to sit down. Don't make sexy excuses for them because they really ain't sexy. Don't put, play the blame game because 50% of the people when you complain, they glad it's not them. And the other 50% don't care. So don't complain and don't blame. Own it. When you own it, you're no longer sitting in the passenger seat of your life, hoping you don't run into a wall. And sometimes when you give up all your power and you're wondering about all the things, why am I stuck and why? You, you move from the passenger seat to the back seat. And sometime in your life, when everything else around you is the reason why you're not moving, you move from the back seat and climbed in the trunk of your own life, hoping you don't run into a wall. Now, I know that sounds crash and harsh, but I'm willing to have a harsh conversation with you because I love you. So let's agree that when you are stuck, somehow something stopped you and then a decision was made to slow down or to stop and stay there. With that same power, let's make the agreement that we slide out of the trunk sometimes back into the back seat, out of the back seat sometimes into the passenger seat, out of the passenger seat sometimes and back into the driver's seat. And then we look at what does movement create for us? Listen, I don't say any of this in judgment. I've been, I've slowed down, I've stopped, I've had to catch my breath. I remember there was a time where it took me a year. It took me a year to catch my breath. I had been in a relationship that somehow became abusive. I didn't see the abuse coming. It just ended up being there. And it got, it was emotionally abusive, then verbally abusive, and then, and then he choked me until I passed out. And I remember waking up the next morning thinking that I had died. And when I realized I was still alive, I realized that I was in the fight for my life. And after that relationship finally ended and I was able to navigate myself out of it, it took a year for me to catch my breath again. It took a year for me to slide out of the trunk, out of the back seat, out of the passenger seat, and back into the driver's seat of my life. And because he was so big and because he was so intimidating and because my son was so small and because I was so in love, my story for being stuck was really sexy. I mean, he was huge, I was small. He was a man, I was a woman. He was abusive and I was in love. I had all the elements for a sexy story to stay stuck. But all I needed was one reason to wanna to get back in the driver's seat of my life and that was I deserve it. I deserve to drive my own future and no situation, no outcome, no experience and no person had the right to drive my life. I don't know if you can hear right now I don't know if you can hear, you might not be able to hear, but if you can hear, you might be able to hear little wheels rolling. And those are my neighbors. And there's two little beautiful children who have these little cars and they're driving the little cars right now. And every now and then you might hear them scream. Like if they can be in the driver's seat at two and four, then who tells us we're supposed to get out of the driver's seat 
at your age and at my age. If you can get in the driver's seat at that age, you should stay in the driver's seat. It's your life. It's your opportunity. So I get you might get stuck. I'm not asking you what are you going to get. I'm asking you what are you going to stay. You might get stuck, but stay committed. Stay committed to your own movement, driving your own radical change in your own amazing life. And as you do that, I'm always going to cheer you on from the sidelines as you drive by in the driver's seat of your life. I'm like, go, girl, go, 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 go. Every time, like look to the left or right now. I'm right there cheering you on. Go, go. While there are plenty of extenuating circumstances, if you are stuck and you decide to sit down, you're not the cause of it often, that's pretty much 100%. I know that stings to hear. I didn't say you're the reason why you got knocked down. I didn't say you're the reason why betrayal occurred. I didn't say you're the reason why something that was...